So another day, another box crouching episode. We're here to recap what happened yesterday in the NBA, as we always do in this channel. If you enjoy that, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And let's go through these games that you can see here as we start with the best game of the night with the Celtics beating the Clippers at home. So what I saw from the Clippers and the Celtics tonight was that the Clippers still got it if they're healthy, right? They can still hang around with these teams, which we pretty much were all sure about. But it was great to see Kawhi play really good he had 26 points 8 rebounds 3 assists he was efficient 11 of 16 from the field and it was great to see them you know have the fight back they were down pretty you know not big they were down like 10 at the half and then they started the third quarter red hot and got back into the game instantly and it was great to see the bench scoring was really low for both teams uh, the Clippers had just two players score from the bench which is not the usual stuff from them but they didn't also get that much shots when you look at it and at the same time I was really I'm you know, the one thing that I'm kind of surprised with the Clippers is their free throw shooting, right? No, they don't get to the line or at least in this game they didn't get to the line as much as you know you would think Kawhi you know used to get to the line a lot PG used to get to the line a lot and well it was just Norman Powell tonight and nobody else really got to the free throw line which of course put them at a you know at some type of disadvantage especially when the Celtics got to the line 22 times and made 17 of them which is a lot more right and that's kind of the game when you look at it because otherwise it was a really back and forth game but you know Boston just hit the shots they needed when they needed them to shout out to Marcus Smart this game is one of the games when you watch it and Marcus Smart is just that guy that makes the right play at the right time hits the shot at the right time when you need him to and he was for me best player you know for the Celtics tonight with 17 points 9 assists 2 steals 1 blocks 3 rebounds 7 of 15 from the field and made those that he needed to make shout out Derek White he was also you know had made those timely shots and you got JT and JB both with 29 points combining you know so they are playing really solid even though both didn't shoot as well as they usually do but it didn't matter the three-point shooting has cooled off really badly when you look at it they shot just 28 percent from the three-point line the celtics did but it doesn't matter they're still a really good team the defense has been getting better you got robert williams playing 22 minutes off the bench he was 12 6 one block one steal one assist and he was plus eight which i mean is great he had four offensive rebounds man robert williams is a menace and he's getting healthier and healthier the defense will get better and better and a really fun match with bit between these two teams it was a great to see the Clippers competing with the Celtics and great to see the Celtics confirming their status. Right? Then we had to Indiana as the Pacers and the Cavs fair in a shootout with the Pacers coming up on top. And the Cavs have now lost three straight and they weren't defending the three-point line where at all. That was their biggest downfall. They made 12 threes to the Pacers 19 and they were shooting even though they shot really well from the field because when you're you know when you score 126 points and you know concede 135 points the defense was the bigger problem than the offense right but they made just 12 threes to the Pacers 19 three-pointers and the Pacers were wildly efficient compared to the Cavs on from the three-point line and it was not the best outing for well anyone defensively right the defense was just bad and they couldn't stop anyone the Tyrese Halliburton is a bad mis mismatch for both Garland and Mitchell especially you know when you consider his size compa compared to theirs but I still you know like the offense from the Cavs the defense just wasn't great enough today they're now on a three game losing streak a bit of a rough stretch for them which they you know had at the start of the season with injuries but this time they're healthy health healthish right not everyone is healthy but most of the guys are healthy and it's a bit of a skid we'll see how they respond because you know it could maybe you know break them who knows because i mean the new team glow could kind of wear off but i don't think it will i think the defense will be fine the offense is great and will be great and they'll be fine they played the pacers who are actually a good team right the pacers can beat anyone on any given night and can lose to anyone on any given night as we've seen this season and they have been playing some really great offense they had four people score 20 plus points with Berenik Matherin scoring 23 off the bench you got Tyrese Halliburton being Tyrese Halliburton with 29 points 9 assists 2 steals just 1 turnover on 10 of 19 from the field 6 of 8 from the 3 point line Buddy Hield had 25 points that 
three pointer that he made to, to start the game was just crazy. One of the best shooters ever. Shout out to Barry Hilt. And Aaron Neesmith was really great with 22 points. Miles Turner had six blocks, 14 and 12. He was great. So, I mean, the Pacers got a lot of people playing some really great basketball. And it, they are a good team. They outshot them, like I, like I said, 19 three pointers to 12. And they shot 61% from the three point line. And I love that Aaron Neesmith dunk. There were a lot of back and forth, you know, a lot of runs in this game, especially in the fourth quarter. The Cavs got off to elite and the momentum switched with the Pacers and then they never kind of looked back and were just on top for the rest of the game and beat the Cavs at home. Then we had to Toronto as the Raptors lose at home to the Grizzlies. Let's start with the Grizzlies tweet that, uh, well, <laughs> they added Toronto, her loss right, the meme about Drake's, you know, kind of uh, album and yeah, didn't go over well on Twitter and the Grizzlies have found themselves in a weird spot when they kind of are overtaking the Suns in the hatred, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of weird to see and I'm kind of loving it to be fair with you, but I'm a Warriors fan so it makes sense, right? But they played a great game tonight, they didn't even you know, let kind of Raptors have a chance. They made 70 points in the paint to the Raptors 50. Ja had 19-4 and 17 with 17 assists, his career high. They shot 50% from the field, 45% from the three-point line. It's, I mean, that's a recipe for success. They had 37 assists to the Raptors 21, which, I mean, says a lot about the Raptors offense, right? Which is, uh, yeah, not too much creation from, you know, team ball right now. And they have been playing some bad defense, which is the more worrying part with, you know, Nick Nurse being a defensive-minded coach and still playing some really bad defense. So, yeah, the Raptors are in a bad spot, but shout out to the Grizzlies. Great game, great team game. The starters played great. The bench was solid and they get a win after some rough losses. And as we head to Toronto, uh, on the Toronto side, Pascal 25-10-4, not the best game from him. OG Ananobi has not been playing really well offensively since he came back from that injury. Scotty Barnes has been better but still some rough you know scoring issues the bench was solid tonight but that was about it just not much to say about Toronto here man they're, they're rough they're really rough next we had to Dallas as the Mavs beat the Rockets at home Luca Luca was killing right he had a triple double in three quarters he's been great and after that 60 point game he had 35 third 12 and 13, he had 13 assists with just 2 turnovers and 2 blocks, 11 of 31 from the field. Luca has been great and the starters were great overall. Spencer with 15, you got Christian Wood with 21, Tim Hardaway with 18, Fight Pablo off the bench provided the perfect pick and roll partner tonight, 19.6 rebounds, 2 blocks, plus 13 off the bench and the Mavs have been, you know, on the roll now, 4 game winning streak, have had some, you know, easier opponents and they are building up on that Luca momentum and the Luca, Luca being Luca, right? and there's not much to add about the Mavs, right? There's not much to talk about with the Mavs. It's just Luca, and that's fun and it's great because, I mean, Luca is great, but at the same time, there's not much to say here with the, you know, this game. And the Rockets on the other side continuing their great job at keeping up the pace for the Wemby race. We'll see, you know, where they land at the end of the season, but a fun, fun continuation of this. And Jalen Green had four threes, has been shooting a little better from the three-point line. Kevin Porter had four threes also. Jabari was efficient overall. So some some signs, you know, you're watching for these three guys and nonetheless, and that's all about it. Then we had to Charlotte as the Hornets beat the Thunder at home. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to see the Thunder win this game so they can, you know, be competitive for the planes, but, but hey, they, they're the Thunder, they're trying their best. They're in a lot of these games, they just didn't have enough today for the Hornets that have been healthier and getting healthy. Lamelo has been bowling, so I'm not, you know, having it against them, just uh, not the best night for them defensively once again. I found it weird with the, you know, shot distribution tonight with Trey Mann taking 19 shots in 23 minutes, he had 17 points. Uh, interesting stuff, but I mean, I guess Shea had 28 on 23 shots, Josh Giddy had 21 and 10, Jalen Williams started with Jalen Williams, which we all know that meme, he had 0 points and 10 rebounds in 24 minutes, interesting game from him, was interesting to see him out there, and a rough loss for the Thunder, but shout out to Charlotte, PJ Washington and Lamelo were great, PJ with 25 points on 10 of 13 shooting, Lamelo had his most efficient game and probably the best game I've seen from him since he came back, 27, 10 and 9 with 3 turnovers, 
great game from him. I've been really unimpressed with him so far this season otherwise. Not, well, not really unimpressed. He's fun to watch, but overall, you know, the entertainment value is great, but is how his value as a player is, I'm not actually sure. But tonight's game shows his best attributes and his best values, and he was great. Also, shout out to Mark Williams, the rookie, who finally is getting some minutes these last, you know, couple of games. And he's been really good. Tonight was his best game. 17 and 13, two steals, two blocks, two assists off the bench in 21 minutes. A great game for the rookie, which, I mean, they need to see more of. And I'm... <laughs> I'm happy to see they are finally playing him because it's, you know, what else are you going to do in this season if not play at least these young guys more, right? So, good job by Charlotte, great win at home. Then we had to San Antonio as the Spurs get, you know, <clears throat> as the Spurs get a win at home against the Knicks who are now on a five game losing streak. Oh, the duality of the New York Knicks, right? Ain't it funny? Ain't it funny? The duality of the New York Knicks is funny. Julius Randle had 41, 11 and 7. You got Emmanuel quickly 36, 7 and 7, which is fun to watch, but they are dealing with some injuries. I don't understand why Tom Thibodeau does, doesn't, you know, give a chance to Cam Reddish. There have been some comments. Luca made a comment that they don't, you know, double the pick and rolls. There have been some comments from, I'm not sure what actually it was, but the Spurs said something about them. Tom Thibodeau, I mean, I would not give him more chances, but hey, he always finds a way, I suppose. And they have been the worst team in the defensive rating once again during this stretch of five games where they are losing and of course the injuries are playing some part of that but man uh, I would just honestly fire Tom Thibodeau if I were the Knicks but I'm not the coach so yeah interesting stuff but shout out to Spurs good win Keldon Johnson 30 points you got Rom Romeo Langford with 23 points on 11 of 16 shooting and Keldon Johnson was also efficient which is great to see and even though there was no Kevin Devin Vassell there was no Devin Vassell, they still found a way to win, the bench was impressive overall in their minutes, they played all about 15, 16, 19 minutes and played some really good team ball, which was fun to see and just a great win for the Spurs, who of course lose in November race, but win. <laughs> yeah, and that about does it for tonight, that about does it. Uh, tonight, tonight, what do we have tonight on the NBA? You got Hawks, Lakers, I'm not sure if LeBron is playing, he's been questionable, that will be interesting to see, the Hawks need a match. The Hawks need a win, and if they can beat the Lakers, it might be time for Nate Millen -Mill finally. Suns at Toronto, that's gonna be interesting with the Suns. Bucks, T Wolves, Bucks are kinda in a weird spot, the T Wolves are losing a lot. Bulls Pistons, I'm pretty sure the Pistons are gonna beat the Bulls even though there are suspensions, but you know, the Bulls have been so funny like that. Pelican Sixers, okay, okay, that's gonna be a good one. Heat Nuggets, if the Heat are healthy, which I mean last game, last time they played they were all healthy, except for Kyle Lowry, that should be a good one. Trailblazers Warriors, should be a good one. Utah Jazz Kings, I mean there are a lot of good games tonight, mm, we're gonna eat, we're gonna have some fun tonight hopefully. It'll be interesting to see Orlando with just 8 players playing playing also so yeah as always i'll be here to cover it all you already know it baby tomorrow with another box coaching episode